someone once said, wisdom is the reward we get for listening. So why aren't we listening more? And who is it we're listening to? For the past 30 years, I've taken interactive arts programs into nursing homes along Colorado's Front Range where I've done a lot of listening to the <clears throat> age-challenged, elders, seniors, old coots, geezers. I call them vintage people. Not village people, <laughs> vintage people. I love the image it conjures, grapes hanging lush in the vineyard, aging into grapes, schmapes, said Edna May, were just shriveled raisins. <laughs> Seniors are our nation's largest and fastest growing population, especially with the tsunami of baby boomers flooding in. I could quote all sorts of statistics, but I would rather introduce you to some of my favorite vintage people and with the help of my husband's photography, give voice to their forgotten faces. Why? because they say things worth listening to. Each of them is a library of story, of knowledge, of opinions. Oh, the opinions. Take politics. Wilbur, I hope this president isn't all vine and no taters. Fern, 91. When it comes to the government, sometimes you get, sometimes you get got. Alma, the more I listen to politicians talk, the better I like dogs. <laughs> Vintage people face the future fearlessly. Nellie. 94, I'm the last leaf on my family tree. Let's hope the wind don't blow anytime soon. <laughs> George, death doesn't bother me any. I figured in the beginning we was created equal. In the end, we'll be cremated equal. <laughs> Manuel, 99. Oh, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, all right. And someone's out there waiting to switch it to off. Vintage people are open, candid. We speak our minds, said Murdy. Anything else takes too much time, and time is something we don't have. Oh, do they speak their minds. No topic is taboo, not even sex. I know, I felt the same way you probably do when I first discovered that they could have those thoughts at their ages. I was doing a program, finishing up, packing up, when John wheeled over to me, grabbed my arm with a surprisingly vice-like grip and said, great program, Carol. Are you married? Well, yes, I am, I said, with four kids at home. He gave me a broad wink. Don't bother me none if it don't bother you. <laughs> at 40, I was feisty. Well, I think it would bother my husband. Oh, shoot, fire, said. 105-year-old John, if I was only 10 years younger, I'd give that man a run for his money. <laughs> Vintage people are people who give us sound advice. They also live the sex we just talked about. Take Bill and Audrey. Bill, she's still got some snap left in her garters. 
and he's got some, some ink left in his pen. <laughs> Vintage people are mirrors that reflect real life with clarity, with honesty. They, they live and face each of their narrowing days, and their days are narrowing, with the same sort of gumption, the same humor, as they faced the dirty 30s, the Great Depression. One New Year's Day, we were celebrating the important first things in life, first kiss, first jobs, and that's when Juanita told her story. Juanita's mother was a young widow trying to eke out a living as a hairdresser to provide for her five little children. In order to make ends meet, she taught her oldest child, 10-year-old Juanita, how to apply makeup and do hair. And then she got Juanita a job at the local mortuary. Night after night, Juanita's mother would come home born bone weary from being on her feet all day and tell stories at the supper table about her disgruntled clientele, never satisfied with a hairdo, a hair color. One night, Juanita giggled, Mama, you should come work with me at the funeral parlor. None of my customers ever complain. <laughs> Vintage people distill decades of experience into profound and free advice. Thorin, the best thing to save for your marriage, for your old age, is your marriage. Marie, a hundred and one. Live each and every day as though it's your last. And one day, you'll be right. <laughs> Best of all, vintage people are the living, breathing embodiment of the values that they cherish. One Veterans Day, I asked the three veterans in my audience to close the program with their best military salutes. Gene, with freckles where his hair should be, sprang to his feet and snapped a crisp salute. Arnold was next. A veteran of Korea and Vietnam, he struggled to unfold himself after sitting for nearly an hour. Oh, don't get up. No, ma'am, a soldier stands to salute. Arnold positioned his spit-polished walker, heaved himself up, and saluted. In a room gone totally quiet, all eyes shifted to the other end to Rusty, where he hunkered in his wheelchair like a cornered animal. Arnie's right. My legs might not work anymore. I can't stand at attention. But I'm standing at attention in my heart, inch by inch. Rusty raised a gnarled hand to his forehead and saluted. Vintage people are our national treasure. They have a lot left to say. Are you listening? Thank you.